And this is The Honorable DJ Metal Monkey, and this is episode 208 of The Honorable DJ Metal Monkey Radio Show. And today's show is inspired by Mike Willion, 60K Smokes. He sent me this pack. This pack was so dope. And you know what? Today, we smoking on 60K Smokes. That's what we smoking on. It, it comes in a pack like this. I had got like two for 30. I, I don't know. Go to his site. Uh... It's a link in the description right now. But it, it, it came in all this pack. Got a cigar cutter, box of matches to smoke. And that's what we're smoking today, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode 208. Stay tuned. Oh, oh it's just me and you in the dark. Oh, I can't you peek it at my soul. set him for like a bond or whatever right but as of right now like he, he's locked up right now what yeah and actually he was set for trial today today so um yeah as from from further notice um he's guilty um they, they don't know exactly like how much time he's gonna what how much time exactly he's gonna do or how much they're gonna give him. But I'm pretty sure he needs to go there for life for what he did to that poor girl. Yeah, that's crazy. What her name was? A Boog the Bandit, B-O-O-G, the yeah. Bandit. She is from Ohio. Did you have a video on that? Um, I don't exactly have a video on that because um, they don't have like an actual video with um, them talking about Murphy, the guy that actually shot her. The yeah. only thing they have is um, some previous videos where it, that actually, the day it actually happened, where her mother's giving a explanation of how her daughter actually is. Mm. Like what type of person she is. She didn't really like speak or elaborate too much on it. It was more of, you know, she was a good child. You know, she wasn't, really around the mixed crowd but everybody makes mistakes you know especially yeah. when you're young you make mistakes so that's about it um that's crazy man like that yeah well you know these rappers and stuff like the, you know what entertainment has got to where like i think uh media has now grown to the point to where it's poured over it is the poured over into the regular community to like like normalism like mm -hmm. over the top shit is normal now. Like everything that's over the fucking top. Like, like it used to be like normal shit. Now everything in the world is fucking over the top. Right. Like you can't be a rapper without having some type of beef or um, some type of conflict. It's almost so scripted. Everything that we do as human beings, even killings, shootings and things like that, they're almost predictable and scripted. It's sad that um, the that type of stuff is, you know, um, normalized, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, and then a lot of, a lot of kids watch this stuff and it's not even that, you know, um, I could say, I, I can honestly blame the parents on this one, yeah. honestly, because you, <laughs> as, as a parent and kids being kids, you have authority over your children. You know, you yeah. have authority, so therefore, you can um, you can tell them what they can and cannot listen to, and what you can stop them from listening to. Yes, yes, you can stop them from the outside world when they when they're older, because you know when they start going to high school and they you know start hanging out with their friends and stuff like that. But you at this point, it's it's the parents' fault. Mm. I can't sit here and try to blame all the artists from for trying to get their money and stuff but you can't 100 percent blame the artists i'm trying to i'm trying to i, I kind of i guess i get what you're saying you know you do have to blame the parents and i'm trying to like take in what you're saying you you do at some point in time i guess i agree i totally agree 
Because like but when the kids are older, when the kids are older, they can think for themselves. But still, mm-hmm. well, yeah, I, I I agree because when you a parent, a lot of these parents, they they are like still trying to have it. Like the beef that we watch with Hassan Campbell and uh, Kwame Brown and stuff. These parents are still acting like they got it. Like like they acting like they're young still. Like they. It's like no difference in them and their children. They children and them got the same mentality. Like, like, and like I said, that's still their fault. Yeah, that's still their fault because that's you being stuck in your ways instead of trying to change yourself. Because once you pass a certain age, your your mentality and your thinking pattern is not going to change. Yeah. What about uh, you heard about uh, this arsenic and baby food? Arsenic and baby food. Sounds familiar. That that does sound crazy. That is fucking nuts, man. So I was watching um Russell Brand mm-hmm. on um uh on on his little show, mm-hmm. and he had like a whole like I'm just like why arsenic shouldn't uh it says it shouldn't exceed uh 100 uh ppb, and I guess that's what parts per billion. But it, it, but why even use arsenic anyway? Way like, 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 but they got 180 in the average baby food or whatever they found. So all I of mean, these, I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, y'all, y'all uh, talk about baby food, right? Y'all, y'all worried about the arsenic and the baby food, but what, what about what about the formula? What about what about all that stuff? That's that you're not supposed to give that to your child anyway. Man, you supposed to give that. So to what's child, the, that so what's the difference of giving them baby food? Man, wild ass shit. Wild ass shit. Dramatic effect on reducing risk. The proposed limit on toxic arsenic in infant rice cereals would end up removing about half off the shelves. The FDA recently analyzed more than 500 infant and toddler foods, and the highest levels of toxic arsenic were found in organic brown rice cereals and toddler puffs. Based on the wording, though I can't confirm it, uh, they appear to be this brand. Not so happy baby if they suffer brain damage or grow up to get cancer. A single serving could expose infants to twice the tolerable arsenic intake set by the EPA for water. I contacted the Happy Baby Company and was told that they were not able to provide any comments on the FDA's results. Eliminating all rice and rice products from the diets of infants and small children up to 6 years old could reduce the lifetime cancer risk, 6% lower chance of developing lung or bladder cancer later in life if infants stopped, 23% lower chance if young kids stopped. But switching to other grains is a move described as drastic and dramatic, creating a huge crisis for the rice industry, presumably, and therefore evidently not feasible at all. Another thing is, uh, I know, you know, and because we ain't been on in a minute in a couple of weeks. You did, uh, <coughs> you've been doing your thing on your show and shit. Yeah. But uh, I, so I want to recap all the shit that we haven't really got a chance to really talk about. So yeah. good old monotone setting. Uh, what about uh, like Shikari Richardson, the the. She uh run oh, in the Olympics. Oh, okay. You're talking about the track star. Okay. Yeah. Um th- about the track star. Um her situation, honestly. <laughs> she fucking fuck, fuck fuck them for for doing what they did to her, to be honest, because yeah. she she just smoked weed. Like Man, look. it's a it's a medicinal herb, and then you got your uh, like other fucking uh, all stars <laughs> or whatever the fuck you want to say. Um, they, they've t- taken steroids, they've taken all types of different types of things and they don't get penalized for it, no. but she go ahead and get caught with a little bit of marijuana. Man, herb, she, man. Get, she get I'm caught with a little, honestly, I, I feel for her. And I honestly just, I, I didn't like the way they handled that situation. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm going to tell you what I would think about, man. You know, cause a lot I know a lot of these shines gonna get mad at me, hmm. and I hate to say shine like that, but I'm I'm excited to say it. It pisses people she's, off. She's, uh, no, I, I don't want to say. It. No, no, no. I like I love her, man. She called man. She, shout out to her, man. Like I, I'm I'm so proud of her 
because she got as far as she got, she got a little endorsements and all that. But guess what? The Olympics pay zero dollars to your pocket. Let me repeat this. The Olympics pay you no money to perform. So with that being said, they ain't paying her you're no volunteering. money. You're volunteering to do this. Yeah, just to get a fucking gold medal or whatever like that. And that shit going to go into somebody's museum and blase skip. And maybe if you fuck up and do something five years from now, they'll take it away from you. Man, fuck that shit. That's like shit like getting a worldwide Emmy or something. Like, how much money does the Emmy or the Grammy get you? So My thing is, I'm, I feel she might be fully aware of this. And if she's not, then you better be aware of it now because yeah. like they already sat there and to, like I, slandered your name over some freaking marijuana. They put her name it's down just, through there. But they did Michael Phelps the same way. So I haven't been getting that's why I don't say a lot of shots probably get mad at me for saying that, but uh you got uh Michael Phelps went through the same thing the swimmer. And he swam, he smoked weed, got caught, bah, 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 bah. I don't know what his penalty was, but at the mm -hmm. same time, like, that's what they do. And it's a fucking game. It's the Olympics. It's who's running the fastest, who's swimming the fastest. Like, it don't matter. It's not going to save the world if the aliens come. We don't give a fuck. What is she going to do, run fast? Like, how's that going to help right. us? Like, like, right. like, where are you going to go? Yeah, it's not like it's a superhero. It's just a fine-ass black chick. You can't run to another motherfucking planet. Yeah, it's just a muscular, fine-ass black chick who's pretty fucking dope, and she got caught smoking weed, and I think now she needs a record deal. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, or something like, I don't I, I can't, I, I, I don't want to joke like that, but shit, fuck it. I mean, we on record. Like, give her a commercial. Like, some weed company need to call her up and be like, do a, I run so fast. I mean, after if she was smart, she would shit. think of those things herself. Yeah, I would. I mean. Like, if I was a manager, I would be have, like, cookies, like, endorse her cookies to somebody like that and be like, you know, after I smoke this, it makes me run this fast or some shit. And if I was Michael Phelps, I'd be like, yo, I was smoking it and I was filling some water and I swam this fast. Like, I'd spin it because the Olympics ain't going to pay you no money. They just want you to look a certain way to other countries. That's the thing. If she's into sports and stuff, like, you can't smoke none of that. You can't you can't do none of that if you want to be into that stuff. Look, you can't you, you can't do Nevada, that. Nevada just, Nevada just legalized uh, marijuana for the UFC. Okay. How about does that? she does, does she play? Well, I'm just saying, oh, like, no. you well, try to get into something else. I don't know. Like, yeah. you go your answer at UFC, the motherfuckers kicking niggas in the shin and shit. Man, I'm, just imagine being high and some motherfucker coming there and punch you in the, you know, he hit you in the nose and you bite your lip, <laughs> and then your hearing go out and you high. Man, that shit will blow my fucking heart. But I, I think if I fought in the UFC, I would definitely fight high though. I would be high, like. I would not be high. I mean, because the ass whooping feel like I ass whooping whether you high or not. I don't know if it intensified. I never got my ass whooped while after smoking butts. <laughs> well, it depends on the person. And, yeah. And the product. It depends on... It, yeah, it depends on the edibles. product and the person. It depends on the product and the person because not everybody reacts the same off weed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and it could be edibles too. I don't know. I think it's like hemp lotions and... You know, marijuana lotions and stuff like that too. Uh it I just read that a little bit before the show. Uh what else you got, man? What what you got? What, what's been going on in the world of Raya X? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so my man's Jake Paul. Y'all know I love oh. me some motherfucking oh, man. Jake Paul. Here come y'all young I, motherfuckers I love always bring it up. I don't give a damn. I don't give a oh, rest ass. I Ooh. love Jake Paul. <laughs> anyway, Jake Paul, <laughs> he out. <laughs> I can't even take myself serious. I, I, man, I can't take this. For one, <laughs> these niggas is YouTubers and they is running y'all generation. See, back in our day, we had motherfuckers in Ring Magazine and they was ranked one all through right, ten. All right, we, we, we get it. <laughs> you know, man. We get it. That's y'all generation thing. We uh, get it. We get it. But. <laughs> on to my man's Jake Paul. So Jake Paul was fucking off, right? 
I I don't know if it was nah, it wasn't the press conference. Cause the press conference, that was a whole nother thing. Yeah. But anyway, so the motherfucker ended up going on the internet, you know, as he do, because you know he he the number one dude on the internet, uh, uh, other than Mr. Kwame Brown. But he he is out here messing with Tyron Woodley. <laughs> he said, Oh shit. He said if he loses, he has to get a tat saying, I love Jake Paul. And if he loses, if Jake loses. He has to get the same vice versa tat. He has to get I love Tyron Woodley. Oh my God. That's a- so, so that's the bet. That was the bet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That was the bet off top, off top before the fight was even predicted type shit. I got a video for that too. If I beat you, you have to get I love Jake Paul tattooed on you. But but if you beat me, I get I love Tyron Woodley tattooed on me. And you have to post it on your Instagram feed. Deal or no deal. Put are you confident or not? <laughs> what y'all think? Bro. Y'all think oh. I should do it? Bro, this guy this guy has no f-ing confidence. Bet. Deal or no deal? Deal. Can we, can we shake on it? But, yeah, like, right off top, he just said, nah, if you lose, you got to get I love Jake Paul said it on okay, you. Okay, so the... <laughs> So, so that's what I'm saying. It, this shit is it's wild. Name one box. Wait, but I'm not done. I'm not done, no. Like, yeah. it, get, it gets even more wild, y'all. It, it's a little bit more with Jake. So, Jake right. ends up, y'all know who Canelo is, right? Yeah. Please tell me y'all know who Canelo is. Mm-hmm. That is one of the best boxers in history. Yeah. This motherfucker said, I want to fight Canelo. Because in three years, three years, he, look, look, he planned out his future already. He said in three years, he's going to be the world champion. <laughs> I thought, listen, listen, listen. What? <laughs> uh, okay. Even, oh. I got a video of him actually explaining that, which is really funny. But yeah, um, he, he's a he's getting a little wild talking about like he wants to yeah, become the world champion and mind you he he said three years so he's what he's saying is it's gonna take him three years to become the champion how now let's go back retread how long has jake paul actually been fighting for does anybody three. know yeah. I, i'm just curious does anybody know i imagine three years okay but jake paul just like Compared to his brother, Logan mm-hmm. Paul, he recently, like, basically was like, hey, since my brother, I, 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 you, know, you know, like, they were buddy and buddy, like, trying to, like, do the same thing together. But my thing is, his, I feel like his brother probably has more of a chance to become Why a world champion. To say it, but, but, his, but his brother's got his ass beat before. Jake I'm not saying that. Not, lost I, okay, but this is the reason why I'm saying this. <laughs> the reason why I'm saying this is just because he has more experience. I'm not saying for yeah. real, for real, he going to be the world champion. I'm, that's he's, he's not what I'm saying. He's definitely not going to be uh, Canelo Alvarez in boxing. It, exactly. That's not uh, what that's, I'm saying. That's, but, that's, mm-hmm. but what I'm saying is, uh, uh, like, dude, you're, you don't have a chance. If your brother doesn't have a chance and he's been boxing for longer, right? he got his ass rocked. Oh, like oh. What, what, whatever his name is, rock his snot box or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right. what yeah, but yeah. So my thing is, Jake could talk like he is an entertainer. That's why he talk like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's why he's I get talking it. like I that. I fucking get it. I, I totally get it. But I feel like he just doing it for show, y'all. Just he gonna get his ass rocked, man. And you honestly, got- Can- Canelo, yeah, I have a video. Um, Yo. and Canelo, I quote unquote, I couldn't get the video <laughs> for a specific reason, but I couldn't get the video. But Canelo did respond to Jake Paul. Oh, I'm glad you did. He don't fuck around, man. And he said like he gonna beat his ass. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah, in you know real what life, saying? straight in real up. life, he really would get his ass whooped. Yeah, like that man ain't fucking playing. I mean, and that's what I'm saying. Like he only talking because his brother yeah. fought Floyd or whatever. But yeah. Okay, so we got 
now that the world has all watched this motherfucking shit unfold, I'm going to talk about it. I wasn't going to talk about it the first week because I thought it was the craziest shit. And, and I'm going to stop playing algebra and I'm going to go ahead and say it. I want everybody to vex that ass up. That's not even funny. That, I do want everybody to vex that. Why would anybody want anybody to vex that ass up? That is crazy, man. Like, what has gone... See, that's what I say. Our entertainment and regular life has mixed to where shit's... They got out of fucking whack. Especially with this COVID. They got a new strain that's out. Uh, because the first strain didn't do what it was supposed to do, apparently. So I don't know what the future may hold on that. But Juvenile, Manny Fresh, and Mia X just made that song. And I'm going to even be honest with y'all. When I heard the song, like, as for a parody song, I thought it was pretty funny. But as far as being mad at them and angry at them, you can't be mad at Man, you can't that's be mad thing. at them. That's the thing. It's not a parody song. It's a whole commercial. <laughs> I know for a dating site. Those people, yeah, yeah, that shit is like for a dating site. It's like a some kind of dating shit, dating app or something like that. I looked at it, and and everybody started talking about it. Like, what are y'all doing? They took a bag, bro. Now, just like you ain't got to back your ass up, you ain't got to vex that ass up. You ain't got, you know. So everybody was getting on to them and shit like that. I'm like, dude, I'm quite sure neither three of them or none of them are, took the vaccine. I'm quite sure Juvie, Mia X, and Manny did not take the vaccine, although they sung that song. So I don't know. I don't know nobody who's going to actually listen to that song, get inspired, and go fucking take a vaccine. I just don't think people will actually do that. And I think people will say You'll be surprised. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I would be surprised because I don't think people will really hear Vex that ass up and actually go do it. I think they'll actually do the there opposite. Are some, there are some dumb people in the world that would do it. I think people will do the opposite, though, because the song is so funny and hilarious. Everybody, I mean, you had Godfrey, you had, for everybody, Vlad probably was talking about this shit. Everybody's been talking about it. And it's like, dude, this shit is so funny to where, like, who the fuck is really... Now, after watching that, about to go take the vaccine now. Now, I know people who's taking the vaccine that I really love that's kind of like, I'm so blowed. I'm like, yo, son, do you know you're not going to ever have kids from this point on? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, you fucked them nuts up, bro. Anyway, <coughs> what uh, what else you got on, um, on your agenda? I got a whole bunch of shit on mine. So um, the feds actually arrested a family of five in Texas mm. because of the Capitol. Y- y'all know the the riot that happened at the Capitol recently oh, when yeah. Trump was well, yeah yeah that, was yeah. in the White House. Okay. So um, they had arrested five people involving that case. Yeah. They arrested five people involved in that case. What you mean? Like they they came? Oh oh. So th- those people were in Texas? Yes. Yo, yeah, so, so uh, yeah. They're from Texas, not what? in Texas. They were at, I just explained it. Okay, so the feds arrested five people <laughs> that were involved in the Capitol yeah. from Texas. They are from Texas, not uh-huh. not in Texas. Well, this is, this is why I say that. <laughs> oh, so, see, look. See, that's you're on your shit. You're on your shit. You're on your shit. As an old motherfucker, I'm going to tell you something. I was on that earlier today. Like, with Texas, the state of Texas is at people's ass. Like, the Democrats that dipped from Texas and shit like that, if they go back, like, it, that was over the voting scandal or whatever like that on another part. So, like, the state of Texas is going at everybody for some hard ass reason for this past year, everything that they did. And they ain't playing, and they telling those politicians and shit, if you come back to this state, you getting your ass locked up. So a lot of people, they cracking on down on Texas and that political shit big time right now. I don't know what's going on, but, you know. Uh, Aren't they also um, evicting a lot of people in Texas? Yeah, they doing that too. They doing that too. They it, Look, it was six arrested in the, um, 
in a, in a, as a it's, it's a new group out here in Atlanta, and there was six arrested uh, guys trying to they was trying to get people out of uh, like just helping homeless people, and they got arrested. Uh, yeah, I have a little video for that shit. Mm. Yeah. You um you had a video for that other thing because you know we got no no we <laughs> have some pictures for y'all to see oh. of these people. So yeah, I can look at those. Yeah. Well, um, anyway, they they probably ping. Uh, see, I got them up there. See, I have them up there on the screen already for mm-hmm. them. stuff like that. Um. So, how was your last show, man? Who did you interview last? Well, my last show, I interviewed my twin from Chicago. In case y'all don't know, um, Sydney West. Y'all uh, she's from Chicago. You know, yeah. I have some more interviews coming out for y'all. You know, just. YouTube yeah. giving me a, a hassle, but uh, y'all y'all got some shit. I got some shit for y'all. Like, don't don't. I ain't sleeping on y'all. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck yeah. Like I was t- I was uh talking about like all of the sites and all and all of the things that see YouTube have been fucking off lately. Like YouTube got Young Pharaoh fucked up. YouTube got like a lot of people fucked up. But I fuck with YouTube and and they everybody switching their rules and laws and not even switching they just tripping so we got other sites that we use now uh like odyssey's one of them vidyard's one of them daily motions one of them you know what i'm saying uh all instagram facebook uh tiktok uh linkedin pinterest tumblr just just anywhere you can go and especially dj info visit that um because it's too many different places. So I'm not going to be dropping on YouTube all year. Like not every show. Some shows will be on other things. You can always go to Spotify, Apple, and all them places. And for your shows too, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You see me playing with this fucking money like this? Like, I don't know why. That shit just got fun. Um, okay. Uh, that, that hurt my ear. <laughs> I don't know what that was. It but. did. I slammed the money on the fucking counter. Um okay, Diddy, Diddy was inspired to hustle after waking up with 15 roaches on his face. Well, that's unfortunate. That's but, disgusting. Could you imagine ever being have you ever been in a house where 15 roaches could be on your face? Mm. <laughs> nah. Yes. Man, if, uh, if one roach hit my motherfucking face, you know His what I'm His face must be dirty. Motherfuck, man. Just think, man. If you sleep and 15 roaches are on your face, like, I mean, like, one or two. The the, the one is oh. going to fuck. I'm going to be slapping everything. 15 so roaches. you're telling me your face is dirty or you're, you either got food on your face or your face was wet? I think he was talking about when he was a kid. He was poor. Mm, oh, Okay. Yeah, growing up, and that's what motivated him to hustle. But shout out to Puff Daddy, man. I told you I want to fucking sign with Puff, man. Revolt shit. I don't want to sign with him, but you know what I mean. I want to put my mm-hmm. show on his fucking shit. I could take care of my own show. I just, I just like Revolt so much. Um, mm-hmm. Put on. Shout out to Rockstar. Shout out to yeah, shoot. Shout out to Mike Willion. I wish you could get some of this. Oh shit! You know what I had to do? That's what. That's when you gotta cut the back of that bitch off. And I don't want to fuck around, and stick my finger in this motherfucking shit. Yeah, I was watching you like that, and I was just like, "That's not how you light a cigar." No, that's not. <laughs> how, that's not how you like it. Light it, man. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. How, however that go, I ain't gonna cut my finger off fucking with that shit. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, in Chicago, 16 people over the 4th of July weekend, 16 people were shot and killed. Mm. 100 people got shot at a fucking block party. Mm. What's up with this shit? Like, you would think after a while in Chicago, the police, the military, something would have stopped that. Like, you can... I'm convinced that a person we can really stop shit like that from happening. I don't think they want to. I don't think nobody gives a fuck. But I think everybody in the world who's watching this show or watching any show 
need to have that on their mind. Like, what the fuck is going on in Chicago? That's crazy. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, like, that's what that it was a lot of shit happening over the Fourth of July weekend this year. This year, Fourth of July weekend, and although the motherfuckers still shooting fucking fireworks, and I'm tired of it. So sick of the fireworks. Somebody probably shot fireworks today. Probably. I'm quite sure. But over the Fourth of July weekend, like I say, these holidays they mask a lot of shit. Uh. Uh, hackers was demanding $70 million from, uh, it's like an Apple store. Uh, they 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 hacked 1 million devices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what they was doing. A uh, motherfucker ran uh, in, in Neiman Marcus in San Francisco, broad daylight, they're looting shit. And it's not just Neiman Marcus, it's a lot of stores that people are just talking and they're just running in that bitch and broad daylight, stealing everything, running out. Yo, crazy shit. What you got, mama? That's just crazy. Um, so <sighs> you you talking about people shooting and all this stuff? Well, my man's little dirt. Now you y'all know he's straight. He's straight staying in Atlanta right now. Um, he lives in a gated uh community. So um, they apparently he was surrounded. His house was surrounded. Uh. And people try to um try to invade his house. Mm. So they had a little dirt. And the reason, yeah, um, the police invaded his house uh, due to a um, recent shooting that had happened. I don't know if y'all remember um, the shooting by the varsity. Yeah, I remember that shit. So, so yeah, um, that that case is still on and open. Uh, whatever the case may be. So the, the police were surrounding his whole um, area where he lived at trying to, I, I don't know exactly why they were, why he, they were so mm. many of them, mm. but um, it was, it was a lot of police officers surrounding his house. Damn. Um. So early Sunday morning, and this is a, this is information that I'm getting. Lil Dirk's Lil Dirk's house or residence in Atlanta had heavy police presence and was possibly raided due to an investigation about a shooting and other crimes. I won't say where he lives at. Y'all know I don't know where I live, right? But I won't say where he lives at, but he lives in a gated community in Atlanta. And through people who were his neighbors who were very confused why there was so much police presence and they said there was an alleged shooting around where he lived at. By the way, in this whole thing, to be fair, they say since it was it happened close to his house. By the way, this is a gated community, which is a little concerning. They call him the victim. Yeah, man, they've been fucking a little dirt. Did you see that little Tim video? No. Ooh, you talk about disrespect. These these kids like uh, not. not I gotta stop saying these kids because especially with me and you do the show because you know what I'm saying this is some real collab shit. And uh, you really hold your own and shit in this game. So, uh, but but people y'all around your age, man, are, are younger, you know what I'm saying? That's why I salute people like you, you know what I'm saying, for getting on here talking because other people can kind of have an influence of like standard of way to fucking act, you know what I'm saying, when you're young. You know, like Lil Tim just made a video. Oh, man, I wish I could pull that shit I up. think I know exactly where you're now. Oh I man, know exactly what you're talking about. Man, was yeah. it like a was it like a diss record or something like that? Yeah, man. And was it dissing O Block? Uh I don't know. It was dissing like King Vaughn. Okay, so he was dissing O Block. Yeah. Because yeah. King Vaughn is from O Block. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, he he mentioned uh Lil Dirk and his brother OTF deep in, in 
I don't know. You know, like all the names of shit, D D Thang and all that shit. But oh, okay. it, it's it's a full beef, man. On like people, like what the fuck are we doing? What the fuck are we doing? Like more beef, more beef. You got a, a conscious world over here, and then you got people who's with the shits all day, every day over here. So, and that's why I say everybody got to pretty much, man, take care of their own community and uh, their own people and shit like like. Whoever the fuck right. you around, man, just care for them, man, and and be positive and good for the world, man. Because this shit is get hip hop has got so boring, man. Because of this shit, it's like you don't like it. It ain't music, so I don't want to. I don't even want to get involved in listening to this shit or even watching. My this. thing is, it, um, they it's the way that um they uh show drill. Cause that's not drill music. Drill music is not about the what they're saying and stuff. That's not what drill music is supposed to be. Yeah. But hey, uh, there's only so much you could do and and tell these kids, you know. There's only so much you could do. It is. And on on top of that, it's just somebody already got you know somebody got killed, you know. And your brother, um, what's his name? Um, Quando Rondo, Quando Quando Rondo, like could have got like could have been away in prison for a long time for this. Like he could have too, you know, because they he was involved regardless of the fact. Like that's his brother. Like he was involved, Quando Rondo. Even though he was the one that got beat up, still you you're still involved. You're there. You know yeah, that shit was a real disrespectful ass video. I'm sitting there watching that shit. I'm like, man, yo, this is why. Like, it mind boggles me because Quando Rondo wasn't even trying to like. After that had happened, he wasn't trying to have the same approach on it. Yeah, that's what that's uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, so and, and <laughs> that's just crazy. So in Atlanta, we're getting ready to pop up with all of these. Uh, we're getting ready to do a lot of uh, concerts. It's like concert season now. Like shows about to start rolling back. Uh, birthday bash is next week, and I want to make an announcement that we will be doing pop ups at different places uh, at different times. So look out for uh, the honorable DJ Metal Monkey popping up on you motherfuckers. Uh, Raya X possibly popping up on you motherfuckers somewhere, and uh, probably with an artist who uh. Yes, yeah, so, so uh, who all you had on? Like, what's all on your show? Who all uh was on your show? I know you had Galactic Human. How was that interview? That's why I was going to ask you about shit. Well, um, Galactic Human has not been uploaded yet, but y'all, um, I had a few artists that you guys, I have interviewed. I have um TDV from Nigeria. I have um Jay Lee last pick from Louis straight from Louisiana. Oh. Um I also have the Galactic Human as well. True that. And um who else do I have? Uh I have a few artists from the Hendo gang as well. Um Dizzy Hendo, if you guys know my previous interview with Dizzy Hendo. Um I have another I have that interview coming y'all way. That's what's up, man. Shit. Make sure y'all check out Genesis. He's from Buffalo, New York. That was also my interview before my twin from Chicago. Y'all can check out Genesis. Buffalo in the house. Shit. You uh do you know? Okay, this uh <laughs> speaking of stories, man. I got one story, man, as well. But wow. So all right, it was this guy, you know, uh, it was this guy, he went undercover. He was at this Black Lives Matter protest and shit right there. He went undercover. His name was, uh, what was his name? Is it Was it Hall? I think something like that. Yeah, that's, that's that was his name. It was Luther Hall. Luther Hall went his ass undercover. Him and he had a white partner uh, officer that went undercover at this Black Lives Matter thing, and they got their ass whooped. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Like, well, they didn't get their ass whooped. They whooped the black dude, right? Mm -hmm. So, by the cops. And then the cop, uh, Dustin Boone, what he did was, like, before he even beat the undercover cop, because they were just 
Just think of this. And I told you that this should be a setup. That's why these protests, man, y'all got to watch yourself going out these protests and shit. They got undercover cops on the protester side, right? So the right. so uh, Justin Boone, I mean, Dustin Boone, uh, Ray Hay Randy Hayes and Bailey Coletta, they were all regular cops on the other side. They didn't know that they was undercover. So they let the white officer go and they beat the black dude up. Mm. The black officer. They didn't know he was undercover. So they, they beat him and fucked him up bad. And before that, he tweeted to his girlfriend, I'm getting ready, to, a white boy getting ready to slap him one tonight. Like, mm. yo, so it was fucked up. And he had uh, Dustin Boone, he had like previous prior things on his, uh, you know, regarding racism on his record. And it was like, why y'all still got this man as a cop? But uh, uh, Luther Hall ended up getting $5 million out of the deal. Mm. Uh, all other ones, uh, Coletta, Hayes, and uh, Boone, they all were uh, charged and shit like that with felonies. There was one more, but he got away. They didn't charge him with anything. And the white officer, the white officer, they just left him alone. They, they they let him go. So, but they plant these people inside these protests. Right. You know what I mean? So just think, like, so you out here protesting and shit, you smoking your blunt or whatever like that, you doing whatever the fuck going on. The next guy next to you could be fucking cop. The stream we're about to show you almost didn't make it so you could see this. This is the live stream recording moments before this undercover detective is beaten by St. Louis police officers. It happens quick, starting here when you hear get on the ground. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Detective Luther Hall said this seemed like forever, but was probably about a minute. When he got back to police headquarters, he says another officer was able to insert his pinky through a hole in his lip. This is Hall's phone with what the detective describes as a baton-shaped blow to it. He said he couldn't access the video from his phone, but it came up on his cloud storage. It asked him to choose delete or save. Detective Hall saved it. The FBI says it pulled this face of an officer as the last image before the stream cut off. That's one of the three defendants, Officer Chris Myers. Myers attorney Scott Rosenblum told jurors his client was nowhere near the beating, that he just picked up Hall's phone. He cross-examined Detective Hall for hours today, challenging Hall the hardest when questioning why Detective Hall started his own investigation outside of internal affairs. The detective said he wanted to know who beat him and he wanted to find out if they were being disciplined for it. Detective Hall testified the entire day from 8.30 till five. At one point, the judge saw he was in pain and made him take a break. He picks it back up tomorrow for the Fox Files. I'm Chris Hayes. Recover cop. Like, so what the fuck is going on? Are we, are we protesting? Is the cops protesting and got cops out here stopping the protest? Is that what's going on? <laughs> I mean, right. think about it. Why would we have undercover cops in the crowd of people who screaming and hollering and kicking shit down? That's undercover cops, and then we got real cops here to stop them. What kind of illusion? What kind of show is this? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is the what is the local government doing? Is it is it mostly is the local government throwing these protests? I believe Just so. The cause of some shit going on. I mean, that sent off a lot of flags in my head. Just a lot of flags. Why would they have, you know, I don't know. Uh, you got anything else, Mom? Well, um, so there was this 30-year-old. He had uh quit his job recently. And um the reason why he quit his job is he he, he was like, fuck it. I don't want to work for nobody no more. Too bad. So he was like, what you call it? Uh my bad, y'all. He worked, he works on a side, he had a little side hustle that he was um, I, I don't exactly, I think he was like making certain certain things, like he was just making some stuff. Um, and he makes two hundred thousand a year in sales. Let me get exactly, let me get exactly what he was doing, but he he he's thirty years old and he recently had quit his job and um, let me try to get that for y'all. I was trying to get the video for that, but I couldn't find it. I I, I don't know why for some odd reason it wasn't available. But 
That's dope. Uh, that's all good. I mean, you don't have uh, what was his name? You know his name? Um, they didn't exact. I don't think they said his name. I'm trying to hold on, y'all. Uh, well, <clears throat> I know Wendy Williams need to goddamn apologize, to the folks. I was looking at that shit. That shit done got sad. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. So this. Uh, so okay. So okay. Okay. So his name is um. He's selling. Uh, there you go. He's selling yarn, dyed yarn, different types of yarn. Yeah. And he knits like clothing, just knit stuff. So he's been selling that type of stuff, and ever since he quit his job, he's been getting two hundred. $200,000 in worth of sales. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's dope, man. So uh, that, you know, I like that story. I like that story a lot. I, I think it's real dope. It shows you what you can do. Uh, right. You get tired. I mean, he's 30 His name old. is, oh, there you go. His name is Kenyon. Ken Yon. K-E-N-Y-O-N. Kenyon? Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, he, he got tired of work and he just created a job and he made it, you know, he made something, but with people, it, go he, ahead. He basically, he basically trying to show people like you can make something out of nothing. You mm-hmm. have to understand like he, he could like, you could sell fucking paper clips with your face on them or something like that. Like you can make something out of nothing Yeah, and you can, and you can make your money. That's what I, I, I totally get that. I fuck with that because like, that's that's just that's the that's the template. And this person's just you know just getting yarn from your your store and dyeing it himself. He like tie dye type shit. Yeah. Like, any, anybody can tie dye. Right. Know? Yo, that nigga got a grift going on. I fuck with that though. I mean, hey, anybody can anybody can do it, but just anybody ain't doing and it. And mind you, that was within a year. Within a year, he made two hundred thousand worth of sales. Hmm. That boy doing it, but that's that's what the dedication is, and I'm quite sure he had a before that he had a solid plan and a timeline for that plan. You know, that's why you know, and I, I I totally applaud that motherfucker. But like I say, like you know, I was thinking though, uh, it just ain't for all people to be able to do it that fast. But actually, if you give yourself time and you really believe in yourself, it will happen. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he had the ultimate blueprint. What was his name? So, so like, people can check his name out. Kenyon. Kenyon. And no last name. He just, his name, Kenyon. Nah, they they, they, they didn't give no last name. They wow. just said his name was Kenyon. That's, that's fucked up. Yo, shout out to Kenyon. 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 <laughs> shout out to you, dude, man. Like, you know. Uh, oh. What? There you go. Okay. It was on a whole different page, but Jake Kenyon, the founder of Kenyon. That's his um uh, yeah. fucking so y'all can go on, y'all can actually visit his website. Um Kenyarn.com is key K-E-N-Y-A-R-N.com. And his Instagram is is that Kenyon. Yo, that's hard. That's hard. So uh What's uh, <laughs> golly, that's uh, <laughs> that's why two hundred thousand dollars and two hundred thousand dollars within a year. Yeah. Worth that's, a, that's a big difference. That that's that fucks up a lot of like, damn. So the ATL bottle boys, that shit started to get out of hand. They showed these people. They show the bottle boys just breaking in, the, like, damn, they're breaking in the cars. Like, they did me like that. They, it'd be some fucked up shit. It'd be the first time somebody just got tired of shit, not to end that whole thing. I I think kids getting money is pretty cool, but when right. it get to th- this point, and I got a video coming up, and when it get to this point, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. It, it need to be stopped.
I feel like it's not just kids getting money. I feel like it's just it depends on the person as well. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it ain't it it was designed for like the kids to just get some like for them to be able to just sell like little things. Now people getting shot, they break they sticking their arms in the car, snatching whatever they can. God damn. Like what the fuck, man? Like how can a motherfucker why would somebody want you at their car? Like why would how, how many times do you know so it goes back to the parenting, man, and uh and the people. Yeah. Whoever it is. Um, I don't want to hold you too long up here, man. Uh, anyway, got- I'm, I'm going to just say something funny because mm-hmm. <laughs> there's just so much other negative shit going on. But Stephen A. Smith, they've been blasting him for like Tanner weeks and well. weeks because I don't know if those of you know who Kwame Brown is, but <laughs> why would you uh-huh. want to come high school, boy? <laughs> anyway, he got slandered on the media because he was um, he was actually um, making fun of a Japanese uh, baseball player from the MLB because he had a translator and the translator was also Asian, but he spoke fluent English. Like fluent, fluent. I have a video on that for y'all. He also actually apologized for it, but it's funny to me because it's like Oh, okay. You want to apologize to, to the to the MOB player, but you don't want to apologize to everybody else you slandered throughout the years. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, that motherfucker, man. <laughs> yeah, but I got a video for that for y'all. Right. That, that, that's that's pretty funny. Let's check this shit out. With all the violence being perpetrated against the Asian community, my comments, albeit unintentional, were clearly insensitive and regrettable. He said by Wilson Wong. ESPN personality Stephen A. Smith apologized overnight after receiving backlash for his remarks about Los Angeles Angels star Shith Hayatani's use of an interpreter. I never intend to offend any community, particularly the Asian community, and especially Shihei himself, Smith wrote in an apology late Monday. As an African-American, keenly aware of the damage stereotyping has done to many in this country, it should have elevated my sensitivities even more. I screwed up, he added. In this day and age, with all the violence being perpetrated against the Asian community, my comments, albeit unintentional, were clearly insensitive and regrettable. I'm sincerely sorry for any angst I've caused with my comments. In a segment on ESPN's morning talk show First Take, Smith said Monday that Itani, a Japanese-born Major League Baseball sensation who has drawn comparisons to Babe Ruth, couldn't be the face of the sport because he uses an interpreter. I understand that baseball is an international sport itself in terms of participation, but when you talk about an audience gravitating to the tube or to the ballpark to actually watch you, I don't think it helps that the number one face is a dude that needs an interpreter so you can understand what the hell he's saying in this country, he said on the show. Criticism was swift. Smith initially doubled down and clarified his comments in a video Monday afternoon, saying that he was talking about the marketability and the promotion of the sport, drawing more ire on social media, including from his fellow colleagues Pablo Torre, host of ESPN Daily Podcast, addressed Smith's comments Monday on Twitter, writing that perhaps we shouldn't ask the most multi-talented player in recorded baseball history to cut up little morsels of English soundbites. And ESPN NFL analyst Mina Kimes responded to a tweet about Atani's accomplishments, adding, gonna go ahead and say this translates in any language. ESPN referred NBC News to Smith's apology on Twitter late Monday. Atani, a two-way Angels superstar, became the first Japanese-born player to participate in MLB's home run derby on Monday. After playing professional Japanese baseball for several years, Atani signed with the Angels in 2017. He was also named American League Rookie of the Year in 2018. Hell yeah. So, uh... Let me see, man. We got uh, to, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. 
So, well, we got human clones and uh, human monkeys and human monkey clones, whatever. So they're making human clone monkey hybrids or whatever like that. Oh, they've been doing that. I know, man. And they start to, you know what? I think this is a rollout of what's really going on. Like, you know, like we've been knowing this shit that they've been doing this right. And now they just starting to roll it out for the people who are like, wow, they're doing this. So, you it's, know, I'm a- it's, it's just mind boggles me how <laughs> people, people are now just now noticing these type of things when it's just like, hey we made this vaccine or just real quick all right you know what i'm saying yeah, just like yeah. that type, that type shit it's just like uh come on now y'all you know it's aborted babies you have a cure for that but you don't have a cure for anything yeah come on. it ain't a cure for nothing else it's just a cure for like this exactly that they want you to take a vaccine for right now right and that's what i'm saying like it, it ain't oh, even red flag hello the red the reddest <laughs> flag is it ain't even fda approved but like, take it, take it. That's like dietary supplements, right? They're not FDA approved, all of them, but and they well, recommend the still take that shit. And they, and they recommend you take it at your own risk. So, like with this vaccine, it's like you're taking it at your, at own, your own risk. risk. <laughs> so, like Obama, him and his team of the top physicists in the world in supersymmetry did some research on the ether of space-time. And they discovered that space-time itself is running on a very specific set of programming code called error correcting codes. The same exact codes that run search engines and web browsers. So we're living inside of a program matrix. This is now real science, real peer-reviewed science. Mm -hmm. Not a mystery, not pseudoscience. That's a fact. We're living in a software program. And we ourselves are also creating software programs like The Sims. Mm-hmm. And The Sims have babies, they get married, they go to church, they go to work, they play with their pets. And now they're going to inject AI into The Sims. So The Sims mm-hmm. are now going to become conscious. So reality is, le- is very many levels deep. Where the likelihood that we're in base reality is probably a Google to one. We're most likely one of trillions of ancestor civilizations that exist in these program matrices. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. You know, so, yeah. Anyway, man, anything else, man? Because I'm, I'm getting ready to get out of so, here. Smoke some blunts. What you got? So, a Facebook... Uh, this is so stupid. Guys, I don't even want to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Say this so, shit. A Facebook engineer abused the access to the um, data and tracked down this woman that um, he was at a hotel with. What? He he used some. So there was a, okay, 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 okay. So yeah, he ends up tracking down this uh, woman that he had recently been in a hotel room with, aka he was probably cheating or whatever the game, what? something like that. So yeah, they caught they caught. Mind you, this person is a Facebook employee. Oh shit! You know, like. Yeah, I knew some shit yeah. like that was going to pop yeah. off one day. I knew yeah. some shit like that was going to pop off because you're giving them people too much power on the other end. But that's the thing. What people don't understand, what, what you don't understand is you have Facebook, Instagram, whatever, whatever you using, any social media platform, whether you're logged in or not, you got the app on your phone. It's still tracking you. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. What else you got? Um, Also, NASA predicts a wobble, like a little wobble effect. So, like, apparently there's going to be a a record of of flooding. It said the moon's orbit may lead to flooding. You what? Oh, shit. Yes. Uh Uh-oh. Yes. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Uh, So, apparently the moon's orbit is going to lead to some some major flooding. Man, I have that's... a video for you guys on that. It's it's really serious. You guys are probably gonna be like, oh shit. Oh fuck. <laughs> but yeah, that no. y'all could check the video out. I think the zombies coming for. Earth's celestial neighbor, the moon. 
soon it will wobble and might become the planet's foe. Abnormally high tides, floods, normal lives disrupted. This is what may happen in the next decade. The regular wobble in the moon's orbit takes around 18.6 years to complete. This wobble was first reported in the year 1728. The moon's gravitational pull during the wobble may exacerbate rising sea levels due to global warming. In one half of the moon's 18.6 year cycle, the Earth's regular daily tides are suppressed. In the other half of the moon cycle, high tides get higher while low tides get lower. In the mid-2030s, global sea level rise will be exacerbated by lunar cycle's amplifying effect, as per a NASA study. So what will be the adverse effects of this wobble in the next decade? The NASA study predicts a grim situation in coastal cities in the US in mid-2030s. Coastal America may see a dramatic increase in high tide floods in the next decade. These floods may occur in clusters lasting a month or longer. During certain phases of the Moon-Earth-Sun alignment, these floods may occur daily. A severe impact on economy, businesses and jobs lost, and dangerous diseases and health problems. These are some of the consequences of regular high tide floods. India is already feeling the impact of climate change in coastal areas. Multiple cyclones in a single year have been hitting the country's coasts, causing death and destruction. With many important cities like Mumbai situated next to the sea, regular floods, as predicted by NASA, may put a serious dent in India's development plan. Probably coming along with it. <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all, check that video out. All right. Okay. All right. I'm gonna just throw these <laughs> on in there, but um, yeah. So Mortal Kombat has a like another little animated series. I don't know if you guys watch Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge, but I did. So it's an animated series that you can pro- you can look. It's probably. I'm, I know it's not on Netflix, but you can watch it on HBO Max, I believe so. Um, it's called Mortal Kombat Battle of the Realms. Y'all can check that out. That's like a new a new animated series. That shit, it's pretty cool. If you guys like Scorpion's Revenge, that shit fire. But the oh, Mortal wow. Kombat movie overall, it honestly, the animated videos definitely beat that movie off top. But I have a video so, for y'all could could see the little trailer of that. I got one for y'all for that. Uh hot. What the hell is he doing? Yes, come to me. Come to die. Shit. A final tournament that will determine not just the future of our realm, but the others as well. A tournament? Like a, what, karate tournament? It's a whole thing. I'll explain later. Greetings, warriors of Earthrealm. Welcome to the final Mortal Kombat. Never mind, that sums it up. Lord Raiden told us of a child. Soul so pure that he could save the realms. You are that child, Liu Kang. Are you ready? I've been waiting a long time for this. So have I. Fight! This is the end! Finish him! 
Duty. Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms. You shall pay for my brother's death. On digital and Blu-ray. All right. All right. So apparently they got two movies coming out. Two. Two, 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 two. Uh-oh. One is Space Jam, obviously with LeBron James. Everybody's seen that. LeBron James about to come out with. I got a, I got, I got a clip for y'all to see how crazy that shit about to be. Honestly, everybody's like critiquing it just because like we so used to see MJ on that bitch, you know, like yeah. see MJ. So he he's he's been actually saying things where like he's nervous because he's not sure if he's gonna play the part right as as good as um mj did right but honestly i seen the look i'm gonna have y'all look at the trailer and let y'all judge i honestly think it's dope but y'all y'all can see the trailer i got that for y'all. <laughs> shit okay well you guys thought that was cool this shit is wild they gotta have a motherfucking matrix four movie Yes, the Matrix Four movie. No, that's gonna be hard. It's like how much <laughs> y'all gotta see the fucking um the witch McCall. I, I got a um, video for y'all to check that out. But before we get into that trailer, I will say this: how much more shit they gotta put out for y'all to see what the fuck really going on? You know what I'm saying? Like how many yeah. more Matrix movies y'all 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 gotta give us? But at the same time, it's probably for the newer generation or whatever. Probably don't even probably know is. I is the Keanu Reeves like they don't know that shit. But yeah, check out the trailer, y'all. That shit is woo wee. Yeah, that shit's crazy. Something seems real. It's like. I've just been dreaming this life. And when I finally wake up, I'll be somebody else. Somebody totally different. I got things inside my head that don't make sense. Dreams that I can't explain. We want to organize, dedicate ourselves to the revolutionary power teach ourselves the specific needs of resisting the structure of our power. Arm ourselves. coming out with another one of those um uh, what else i got um I, I i know i got some more hold on y'all hold on hold on hold on oh oh okay oh. okay 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 so we all love dmx we all love dmx um shout out to his family um r.i.p um apparently they have a um a big beautiful ass mural in yonkers i have Ooh. a i have a um, clip for y'all to see. It, it's so beautiful. Like, oh, no. it, it's amazing. Check that shit out. Fuck yeah. What else I got? Oh, oh, okay. Um, for my people that love to party, 
please <laughs> all y'all people that love to party love to get lit love to just just turn up um boozy badass is about to have a bash august 20 oh, i think it's it, it it wasn't like a set date it was either 28th or 27th one of those two um my dude flavor flave actually announced it on the page um you can also you can also go to the link in the bio um hold on let me get the right instagram yeah Yo, you're right he's, uh, oh, seen that shit. He's, okay so you can go on the instagram is uh he's back again 2021 and in the link in the bio you can get your tickets it's the boozy badass bash um i also have a clip for y'all so y'all can check out Flavor Flav and Boozy Badass, because they were like making fun of it because they look like each other. <laughs> hey, yo, check one, two. This is Flavor Flav. Y'all see this nigga right here? Hey, yo, check this out. Y'all better come down to his bash. All right, the Boozy Bash. August 28th, August 27th. You know what I'm saying? August 27th, Marvel, August 28th. The Boozy Bash, baby. That's right. And Flavor Flav, I'm coming. I'm going to be. Yeah. What you oh, had? No, ain't it? no, I ain't. Okay, so apparently these people, man, <laughs> it it just be funny to me the shit people be doing. Like I just don't get it. All right, so these people had dumped they, you know, they little they little pet goldfish and shit <laughs> in the motherfucking ocean, right? Yeah, big the motherfuckers in. Yo, that my hoes <laughs> on steroids. <laughs> like, I, I got a picture for y'all. Like, this little fucker, like, what the fuck? I was like, damn, what is this, a sea bass, nigga? Like, that, bitch, that bitch big did a motherfucker, man. That shit was so oh big. Oh, my God. Yo. Yeah, that shit's so big. Check out that picture. But, yeah, that you see how big that shit is? That shit God is. Goddamn. Let, let me catch you fucking lacking. I'm going to slap the shit out of you with that damn gold fish. Oh, that shit is hella. <laughs> that shit is hella. Uh, that shit is hella big, man. Like, I looked at that shit. I was like, what the fuck? A goldfish? We're going to eat that motherfucker. <laughs> shit. Um, so, one last thing for y'all. What else you got, mama? All right, so in Midtown, in Midtown, they're building a, yo, this shit is nuts. They're building a 37-story building. 37-story building. They have a permit in Midtown right now. In they're Atlanta? Building, yes, Midtown Atlanta. Uh, yes. It's 37 oh, stories high. 37 stories high. This shit is nuts. Yeah. I mean, you, real shit. I think I got a little clip for y'all on that too. I'm not sure. Oh, show but us yeah. some shit. Show us some shit. But yeah, that that shit is that shit is high class, man. Like they yeah. they ain't playing. That shit look like a whole motherfucking club out there, bitch. <laughs> that would look like <laughs> shit. Show me that shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Um. It's been a lot going on in the news and stuff like that. It's just a lot of things are manifesting. Uh, you know, before we have to realize everybody been locked up in the house and now they're out of the house and shit is going. Yeah, to now, yeah, it's, now everything's just starting up. Yeah, they, we, we walked into a new world. We walked into a new world. Like the, the world is new and we just have to, and everybody's still trying to like find out where they at. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we doing? And it's, it's pretty fucking weird out there right now. Uh, yeah. Like I said, if it wasn't for Trump, man, I mean, we'd be in uh, FEMA camps right now. That was yeah. the that was the fucking agenda, but uh, he he kind of helped stop that from happening. But now they're trying to send his ass to jail. Uh, I think right now, um, and, and another reason why we do this show, why I do the show with you a lot of time, is because. Uh, we have to bridge the old and the young, the older generation, the younger generation, and kind of show how you should interact without uh, without me being your age and you being my age. Yes, yes, um, yes. And um, yeah, I, I can see what you're saying with that. Like with, with my platform, I'm just trying to show these kids like y'all don't have to be doing what everybody else doing. Just be you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like. You don't have to like overreact to things and stuff. That's how I am. And with this platform, I just, I'm showing people that, you know, uh, all of these years that you've 
been like I've been a music producer. I've been a, I started off as an artist. I've uh, been a producer, uh, manager, publisher, songwriter. You name it. You can take all of that experience and don't have to say, "Well, this is what I used to do." You can apply it to your life now. Get a show and display and, and teach people and, and and stay in the current. But you don't have to go back and compete. You just stay in the current and, and give game to the people who do that stuff now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's on the come up. You just give game or uh, interview those guys and give them their flowers. Like I did Dirty Dan. Me and me and Dan go back a long time, a long way. And, you know, and he's still making big noise. And I'll do that or I'll do a, a comedian like Eric Washington or somebody like that and just talk to people that's uh, – and, and show other people at the same time like you can just have a regular conversation with these people and it's better than sitting there gossiping about celebrities. You know what I'm saying? We could talk right. about real life. We could talk about things that's, that, that really goes on that we would normally be talking about. I'm basically having a conversation on the internet on some shit that, you know, we should be talking about anyway, getting this conversation going without right. us having to praise celebrities all the time. Like we talk about celebrity shit. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, we don't spend most of our time on that. We we got a big range of, you know, because like I got people who's uh like on the, on that on that competition shit, and it ain't no competition. It ain't no. I don't think two people are doing the same thing. Uh, and uh, we not you know even our both our brands we're not uh we're not just interview motherfuckers <clears throat> like. Our show ain't just interview shit. We got fucking different topics. Right. So not being caught in that one box of, oh, this is what I got to do. Create content, create content, create content, and uh, give it to the people. I mean, valuable shit and shit that's near and dear to you. Like, this is a real conversation. You know? Okay. I don't know. Shit. Fucking... Uh, I don't know, man. I need to get me some fucking halls or something, like some type of something. Yeah. Yeah. The Honorable DJ Metal Monkey needs some fucking TLC. Needs some right. cough syrup. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> sipping on that scissor. <laughs> sipping on that chip. Sipping. <laughs> I've been doing this shit, and you know, I'm against the money phone and all that stuff, but I think this is just so funny to do, because this gets people's attention more than like anything else, they want to see a bunch of hundreds. They want to see, that's what they think. And somebody's sitting on us in lusting and wanting. It's like, dude, for this shit, I, people get killed over, that's crazy. Like, fuck money, dude. Like, I wish we could just go without money in society for at least one year. Boy, <laughs> how the tables are turned. <laughs> Shit. You're gonna have to get everybody together for that damn man. It's gonna be some, <laughs> it's gonna be some fights, some zombie apocalypses, and everything. Uh all right, you got anything else to say, mama? Well, as far as no, just make sure y'all check out my website. Make sure you check out riax.com. Make sure you check out my channel. Make sure you check me out on every single platform. And, and yeah, that's about it. And stay tuned for some uh, new content. Okay, for sure, man. same deal, man. Visit djmetalmonkey.info. This is episode 208. Uh, make sure y'all um, go to my episode 207. It's not on visual, it's not on visual, it's on um, anywhere you can listen to podcasts at uh, Spotify, uh, Apple, iTunes, all of that shit, like anywhere, uh, radio public. And it's Amber Sorrell. It's a funny ass conversation. I kind of I played my beats in the background this time. So y'all check that out. Thank y'all for all of the YouTube love, the new subscribers, all of that stuff. Y'all stay in tune. Visit djmetalmonkey.info. Visit ryx.com. I will holler at you motherfuckers on my next show. This is us in the morning time. <laughs> and we out of here. This motherfucker, Ew. it's early as shit. You motherfuckers ain't. It's time for the ancestors. We about to go. I don't know. I'm about to watch some movies, man. I've been watching movies.
Ow. Yeah. What, what you been watching? Man, I watch uh fucking uh, I'm getting ready to watch year one. I was watching Ooh, Your Highness, yeah. yeah. Year yeah. one is streaming right now, and I'm getting ready to watch that shit. And uh okay, okay. What you finna watch that shit on? I don't know. Whatever it's streaming on. I I, I forgot just seen it's now streaming and whatever it's streaming on, I got it. So matter of fact, y'all be looking up to uh us being on IMDB. Odyssey, Vidyard, uh, Daily Motion, especially Daily Motion. I fuck with Daily Motion. Y'all go there and we'll look at this back catalog. It's a lot of places like that. Um, and subscription services. It's going to be uh, shows on my subscription service on the website that you cannot get on YouTube. And it's going to be a lot of content that you cannot get on YouTube. You're going to have to go to djmillamonkey.info. Yes, sir. So, holla. I, I, I'm going to see you motherfuckers later. Um, I love y'all. And y'all, please stay tuned and check out shows. Uh, two shows a week. That's how I do it. Holler. <laughs> <laughs>